Hello there, future teacher. Welcome. In this video, we are going to talk another topic for the JAD 1 or understanding the self. In this video, we are going to talk about the stages of development as proposed by John W. Santrock. John W. Santrock identified eight stages of development. So according to Santrock, all of the human beings undergo these eight stages of development in their lifetime. So we have here the first stage the prenatal stage followed by the infancy stage the third one is the early childhood stage the fourth one is the late childhood the fifth one is the adolescence sixth is the young adulthood middle age and the last thing is the old age so let's start with the first stage which is the prenatal stage when we talk about prenatal stage according to Santrak, it is the stage of our life starting from the conception to the time of birth so after the fertilization of the egg we will now be conceived by our by our mothers and so um that's the time where we call it prenatal stage and this is our evolution as we were still inside the wombs of our mother and this is the prenatal period of human development from conception to birth so after the fertilization this is now how we look like for two weeks and then for four weeks and six weeks by the seventh week inside the womb this is how we look like for like two months 12 weeks and then the 14 weeks 16 weeks 18 weeks then 20 weeks 21 weeks 26 weeks 32 weeks so eight months old and 36 weeks 38 weeks and then 40 weeks up to the delivery this is how we develop inside the womb and that is what we call the prenatal stage of our lives after we were delivered by our mothers so now we enter according to Santrak, we enter the infancy stage so infancy stage is from zero to two years old and infancy stage is the foundation age it is where the basic behavior patterns are organized and many ontogenetic skills emerge so this is where we like um, develop our motor skills okay, like we crawl we stand and uh, there are some um, kids that are very advanced that they can scribble down already they can play clay already so from infancy zero to two years old and then uh, the next stage now is the early childhood so our age for this stage we are about two to six years old and on this stage this is characterized as the pre-gang period why pre-gang period because you know as you can see here in the picture the child now enters the no stage when his or her parents tell him or her to do this often times the child will say no like a member of a gang so the child now becomes rebellious he or she now knows how to say no to someone from his from his or her family and also in this stage from two to six years old the children are very curious can you still remember when you were still at the around this age so you were very curious that time like you asked anything that you could ask to your parents or to your um, sisters and brothers because according to Santrak, that's very normal as this stage two to six years old by early childhood that is our questioning age and also the language and elementary reasoning is acquired that is why it's very important for the parents or whomever is the caregiver of a child to provide the child parent learning materials because that's a very crucial age for a child to learn language and also in this specific age for early childhood 
2 to 6 years old, we are already sent to um, play school, kindergarten schools, right? And so this is where the initial socialization is experienced. So we, the kids at this age, like they start to socialize with other kids by playing together. Or the fourth stage is the middle and late child. We are around 6 to 12 years old. And in the early childhood, it is considered as the pre-gang age. While in the 6 to 12 years old for the middle and late childhood, we are considered in the gang age. Okay, why gang age? Because as compared to early childhood, we socialize with other kids. However, in the middle and late childhood, when we were in the grade school or elementary schools, we can now form barcadas, right? Peer groups. And that's why um, it is considered as the gang age because we already have the ability to socialize and to make circle of friends in our classrooms or in our school community. This is considered as the age of creativity development of social self-help play and school skill as well as the team play so specifically in middle and late childhood this is where the kids develop their the sense of teamwork Okay, because they are being provided with lots of group activities. They are exposed in different sports activities. And that is the time where the children can develop definitely their teamwork. So for, again, the fourth stage, the middle and late childhood, 6 to 12 years old. The fifth stage of development is the adolescent stage which is from 13 to 19 years old. Maybe some of you are still in the adolescence stage. This is the transition age from childhood to adulthood. Some people find it very difficult at this moment because there will be some adjustments. They have to establish now their selves as adults. They undergo role confusion because they're confused whether to act as a child or to act as an adult. So this is a uh, adolescence is really considered as a transition age from childhood to adulthood. And also in adolescence, this is where sex maturation and rapid physical development occurs. And if we can still remember when we were, we were still in high school, by 13 years old, we are already in high school, right? And when puberty hits hard, you know, our um, hormones for the girls or for the boys. So we um, experience having pimples in our faces because this that is the stage where rapid physical development occurs. And also, it is not only involves the physical change. Okay, we are also talking about the change in our feelings, in how we think, and in how we act. Kumbaga, sa Tagalog pa, um, nagdadalaga at nagbibinata and once we are nagdadalaga and nagbibinata so of course you are you can now feel having the entitlement that you are approaching towards a legal age and by 18 to 19 years old yeah you are already in the legal age so you might some of you might think that I, since I'm already at the legal age, I can do now whatever I want. Um, not all of my decisions should be from should be anchored from my parents anymore because I can now make my own decisions. And also, this, this will affect how you act. Okay. And in adolescence, let us remember, according to Sandra, this is where we become very much peer oriented, and we become too sensitive and too emotional. We gain more experiences in life we experience hormonal disequilibrium and this is what we have mentioned earlier the, we experience puberty stage so again adolescence 13 to 19 years old what comes after adolescence we have this young adulthood from 19 to 40 years old so me i belong already to this up stage i'm already in my young adulthood stage according to Sandra. and this is the age of adjustment to new patterns of life after graduating so i am now um trying to focus on another aspects of my life while my other like age mates 
they are already starting to build their own families. So they are now taking the roles of being uh, my bahay or like my buhay my asawa. So spouse, being a parent, and being the breadwinner of the family. So young adulthood. And after young adulthood, by age 40 to 65, we are already in the middle age according to John Santra. And this is the transition age when adjustments to initial physical and mental decline are experienced. And also this is where the stage now we can experience the, the death of our parents. So this is also a stage where we make adjustments in terms of like losing someone from the family. When we talk about initial physical decline, so of course by age 40 or 50 or 60, we can now, we might feel like I want to retire. If you are a government employee, you want to retire because you are already tired. Sabi nga nila, life begins at 40. So um, other people grind hard very much during their young adulthood stage because they want to enjoy life during their middle age. People around this age experience this mental decline. So if we compare our memorization ability as compared to when we are still um, at our younger years, when we were still in the adolescent stage, in the young adulthood stage, if we compare our memorization ability or memory itself we compare it to the middle age so there is really a great difference that is the middle age 40 to 65 years old and the last stage according to John W. Suntrock is the old age from 65 to death and for the middle age if we may go back to the presentation in the middle age we experience here a physical and mental decline in the old age we can now feel the increase an increase in the rapid physical and mental mental decline and psychological as well as physical illnesses are experienced that is why most of our grandmothers um, grandfathers experience like um, dementia or like they already experience um, the difficulty in walking standing some of them may um, experience being bedridden because from 65 to death well what can we expect they are already experiencing health and mental issues so now let's have a review of what are those eight stages of development according to john w sancho first we have the prenatal stage infancy early childhood stage late childhood stage adolescence young adulthood middle age and old age now we have another theorist who provided us with another um, set of stages of development and this is proposed by eric erickson in his psychosocial theory so let's just take a look into the overview of how the stages of development of John Santrock and Eric Erickson different from each other. So let's try to take a look into the first stage. In Santrock's stages of development, the first stage is the prenatal stage, while the stage of the development in Eric Erickson's theory is infancy. This is the first stage. And also, there is a difference between the um, range of ages for that specific stages, if you may observe. So, the second stage, according to Santrak, is infancy. And it has now become the first stage, according to Erickson, right? And it is replaced by toddlerhood. Okay? And the age is one and one half to three years old that is according to eric erickson the third stage of john santrock is termed as early childhood while the third stage in eric erickson is preschooler and ages two to six and as to eric erickson it's three to six now for the late childhood According to Suntrock, this is the same with Eric Erickson, according to age, but only different in the term being used, which now becomes the grade schooler. As for the adolescents, 13 to 19 years old, adolescents in Eric Erickson is 12 to 18 years old. 
For the young adulthood, according to John Sontrack, it's the same with Eric Erikson, 19 to 40 years old. Middle age, according to Sontrack, is 40 to 65, while middle age, according to Erikson, is 40 to 60. While old age, according to Sontrack, is 65 to death, and Eric Erikson, old age, is 60 and above. So at least now, we already know that there are two theorists who propose, who propose the stages of development both of them have uh, proposed eight stages of development but they differ in some aspects according to what stage comes first and according to the age range for that specific stage now let us discuss eric erickson's psychosocial um, theory so psychosocial theory this talks about the eight major stages of development and each stage poses a unique development task that they have to perform and simultaneously presenting individual with a crisis that he must struggle through so for us to have a background or for us to make it easier to remember so it is presented through a ladder First is the trust versus mistrust. Next is the autonomy versus shame and doubt. These are the crises. Initiative versus guilt. The fourth one is the industry versus inferiority. Fifth is the identity versus role confusion. Sixth is intimacy versus isolation. Followed by generativity versus stagnation. And the last stage is ego identity versus despair. So according to Erickson, Eight stages of development unfold through the lifespan, okay? And each stage consists a unique developmental task that confronts individuals with crises that must be resolved. Again, just we just repeated what we have read earlier. So, um, specifically, trust versus mistrust. We are going to discuss it through this table. So we, in this table, you can see here the stage, the infancy stage with its um, age range, 0 to 18 months, the crisis, the virtue, the relationship, and the question. Okay, so for the infancy, 0 to 18 months years old, the crisis that we face during those um, 0 to 1 and a half year of our lives is the trust versus mistrust. And once we have resolved this crisis, once we have um, developed the trust, the virtue that we can further develop is this drive and hope. Okay? And basically, who can help us develop or resolve this crisis is our mother. Why? Our mother is the main caregiver during this stage of our lives. So when we feel hungry, so we cry as a child or as a baby, and then who tend to us? It's our mothers. Our question here, though we don't have still the ability to ask a question um, during that stage, right? But is my environment trustworthy or not? Okay, what's the what's the implication if when we cry, when we are hung, hungry, and our mother did not attend to us? So maybe we can form, according to Eric Sonha, huh, we can form this feeling of mistrust. Because at the back of our minds, when we were still babies, we might we might think, according to Erickson, that we cannot trust our environment because when we need them, there's. There is no one from the family who will attend to our needs, okay? So again, it's very important for our mothers or for our parents to attend to us when we are still babies so that we can build trust. Next is the toddlerhood, one and a half year to three years old. So the crisis that we have to resolve is the autonomy versus shame and doubt. And once we have resolved this conflict, we will be able to develop willpower and self-control. So the relationship there is our both of our parents. Okay, not only the mother, but this will include the father, father as well. And autonomy is like having the control, control over things that, of course, that you can do. Like, for say, for example, you will be allowed to take a bath on your own. You will be allowed to feed yourself. So, do you need help? 
from others if your parents will scold you whenever you try to get your spoon because you want to feed yourself what is the tendency we might develop shame and doubt because you received punishment because you received like um, a negative feedback from your parents that is why it's very important for our um, kids from one 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 and one half year to three years old to be allowed to do things what they want to do like playing outside because this will allow them to develop willpower and self-control the the crisis that should be resolved is autonomy versus shame and doubt we have to avoid developing shame and doubt to our kids instead we have to develop autonomy next is preschooler three to six years old the crisis there is the initiative versus guilt so the virtue virtue that a child may develop once he or she resolved this crisis is the purpose and direction and still the relationship that needs to be built on this um, specific crisis still the the family and the question there is how moral am i it's because we are talking about here the initiative versus guilt and um let's say for example when a kid preschooler three to six years old the teachers there um, provided activities and the teachers called the child and so the child will think like i did something wrong and so what will the child feel the feeling of guilt and so the kid will think that he is immoral okay he or she does not have values because his or her teacher his family are thinking that he is what he is doing is always wrong i hope you got my point so the preschoolers must be able to um so resolve this crisis by this time they should be able to develop this so-called initiative that is why by allowing them to do activities on their own they will be able to develop this autonomy and then eventually they will now have the um, mindset that they are allowed to actually do or to start doing something that they want to do having the initiative okay and then next is the grade schooler um what is the crisis being faced by those children in the grade school from 6 to 12 years old this is the industry versus inferiority once they have resolved this crisis, they may be able to develop the virtue of competence. And who are those people that plays a big role in developing competence in our children? Of course, it's the neighborhood and the school because this, that is where our children spend most of their time. And the question there is, am I good at what I do? Because if we can still remember during our elementary grades our um, teachers they order us to clean the classrooms our teachers assign cleaners our teachers are trying to develop our industry okay how helpful we are and if we do something do we finish it on time so industry and actually this is very highly um connected to the preschooler if our preschoolers if they were not able to establish initiative or to develop this initiative they will feel this guilt right whenever they do something they feel like they are doing it wrong and so it connects to when they um, arrive at the grade school at this stage because since they do not um, have the initiative to do something they let their other um, classmates do the tasks and so they will feel inferior because they do not know how to do it i hope you again got my point um when we talk about the industry versus inferiority crisis being faced by grade schoolers from 6 to 12 years old Now let's proceed to the next stage of the psycho psychosocial theory of Eric Erikson. We have here the adolescent stage from 12 to 18 years old and the crisis that our um, children or you 
The crisis that you have to resolve on this specific stage is the identity versus role confusion. And once we have resolved this, the virtue that we will be able to develop is devotion and fidelity. And who are those persons that we need to build relationship with? Or who are those persons who play a great role in this um, stage? So we have the peers and groups. And the question that a person usually asks when he or she in this stage is, who am I? And with identity versus role confusion, you will be able to develop um, your sense of self. If you have resolved or if you have resolved this crisis you will be able to develop again your sense of self and also in the adolescence stage 12 to 18 years old if you can see here the persons um, being concerned with this um, stage are the peers and groups oftentimes um, kids belonging to this age group seeks more validation from their peers right uh, would you agree with me when you were still on this age or like as of now there were some instances that if you have secrets or if you have um heartaches the more you feel like sharing it to your friends instead of your family because um you feel more comfortable sharing your feelings to your friends because they were around your age and you believe that they can relate to you so that is why you should um, choose um, friends, those who could bring good influence to you as well. Because, the, the, you know, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. The way how your friends um, live will somehow affect your outlook in life. How your friends behave somehow affect your actions. It will affect your actions as well, right? And so with that, if you are able to I to build who you are regardless of your gender preference, so you will somehow be able to identify what is your real identity. You will be confident enough of who you are you will not feel this so-called role confusion and next is the young adulthood stage from 19 to, 4, 19 to 40 years old so the crisis being faced by um persons or people around this age is this one intimacy versus isolation and once they have if they have resolved this crisis they will be able to develop affiliation and love um of course the really the they the persons that are having particular role in this um stage are the lovers and friends of a specific person and the, usually the question there that a person may have when he or she is on this young adulthood stage is this one. Can I be loved? Because diba, um, at this stage, usually the normal way <laughs> people around this age are already seeking for romantic relationships and they are trying to consider marrying and building families and so i'm um, starting with building um, romantic relationships if they have found someone whom they can spend their lives with and so they will be able to develop this virtue affiliation and love and they cannot build strong romantic relationships with uh, the opposite sex of course face isolation and they will feel lonely loneliness and isolation so that is the challenge or that is the crisis that young adulthood should um or persons in young adulthood should resolve next is the middle adulthood 40 to 60 years old the crisis there is generativity versus stagnation if they have work then they may feel like they are contributing something to the community and if they do not have work, they are on, 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 you know, they are stay at home. They just, uh, some people, according to Eric Erickson, might feel this so-called stagnation. There's no something new in their lives. They become stagnant. They feel stagnant, and they f they will eventually feel that. They are worthless, according to Eric Erickson. If people will be able to resolve this crisis, if they will be able to achieve generativity, they will be able to develop productivity and caring. 
and usually the people around this age it is their children and community that affects or somehow have a great role again in developing this um productivity and caring to that specific person let's say for example in a family so parents look forward to the future of their children right and some parents even advise their children to do good to not become deviant in the society um and children they will try to like inculcate to their children that they should honor their parents because when they are outside they are carrying the name the surnames of their parents like when you are outside yeah um whose kid are you oh you are the child of and then um what what's the implication of that one if you are misbehaving of course it will affect the name of your parents so if you are behaving accordingly according to the norms of the society if you are not a deviant kid so your parents will become proud of you they will feel like they are contributing something to the society by producing children who are well mannered okay so if they are trying to discipline or to mold their children they at the same time they are asking themselves what am i doing all this for and the ba the major beneficiary of their actions of molding you as their children is the society they have to contribute something to the society and the last psychosocial stage according to eric erickson is the late adulthood when we age 60 and above and the crisis that old people have to resolve is integrity versus despair and if they will be able to resolve this conflict or crisis they will have this wisdom and who are those people who should um this person in the old age should build relationship with oh it's usually the i know the bigger picture it's a society the world and life itself and the question that usually old people have is this one what kind of life have i lived okay once they will you know old age they are retired they tend to stay at home and then while they are by themselves they often reflect what kind of life they have lived uh, let me just again um, connect this to their lives during middle adulthood let's say for example you are a teacher you are now at your old age and when you are spending your time alone reflecting you will make you may be able to um look back into the into your life where you have touched the lives of your students and so when you think that, what kind of life have i lived ah i was able to contribute something to the society you feel very proud of it because of your profession you were able to influence students you have seen students you have seen your students achieve success in life and so what you will feel this integrity you will not feel despair you will feel proud and because of what you have experienced you will be able to have this wisdom and you may pass on this wisdom to your grandchildren this is what i did in my early life and so you should also do this because i have tried this one so those are the psychosocial stages or the stages of development according to eric erickson so this is the first stage the infancy where we face trust versus mistrust of course we have to do our best that if we have our children at homes or if we have babies so whenever they are crying we have to tend to them because that way they will be able to build trust they will be able to trust their environment and during their um toddlerhood they will feel or they will encounter this autonomy versus shame and doubt and of course our goal is to all develop the autonomy so that when they arrive 
in the preschool stage, uh, they will be able to lead. They will be able to have this initiative. They won't be afraid to do something. And then when they are already in grade school, of course, we have to do, um, if they are, if they believe that they can do something, so industry will follow. And then when they arrive or when you are already here on this stage, it is very important that you will, you will try to establish your identity. You will be, you should be proud of who you are so that you will avoid having this role confusion and you have to choose your, or you have to make decisions right so that you will have this so-called intimacy instead of isolation. And when you are on the middle age, it is very important that you have this um, generativity instead of stagnation so that when you go to the old age according to eric erickson you will feel integrity instead of despair and so that's it for the different stages of development we have discussed the stages of development according to sunchuck and eric erickson i hope you have learned something from this video thank you so much and god bless you